when we got back as a staff and then you watch uh, all the cut-ups and all that kind of stuff, um, it, it kind of all starts to piece itself together, kind of what we're missing. You, you get the kind of a brief from, from the scouting department. Um, you kind of know where they're leaning and, you know, you see the stuff on ESPN and how people are ranking them. Uh, but then you have to go to work and you have to put the work in and how it fits in your offense, you know. And with Garrett, like, not a lot of times when you watch receivers in this league, uh, for, in, in college football, you only get so many clips for bump. Well, in the league, particularly in our division, that's what we have to beat. Miami, New England, Buffalo, they're going to get up in your grill. And he shows the ability to do that. Uh, pretty easily. It's going to be harder, obviously, in the league, uh, but you can see the dynamic traits in the range and all that uh, to be able to get that done. You can see it when he's playing off, just the full speed cuts. Again, it's not easy for guys to be running one way and then uh, cleanly redirect the other way. And remember, he knows exactly where he's going. It's just, will his body allow him to do it? The defender has no idea where he's going, so he has to react and adjust off of him. And that's a tough thing to do, and that's what you saw time and time again um, from, from Garrett. Every, you always want to piece this thing together like a basketball team, no doubt, where there's, you, got, you don't have five point guards out there that have a lot of the same attributes. Corey's our, our bigger guy, our stronger guy, no doubt. you got, uh, uh, obviously, Elijah in, in the production he had midseason before he had the injury, and Barrios and the stuff that he can do in the slot and the gadget ability. And the, like I said with Garrett, just that versatility where we feel like he can do a little bit of all that. It'll be fun because, you you know, it's, it's going to be my job and the rest of the staff's job to figure this thing out week in and week out. It'll play itself out throughout training camp. We're not pigeonholing ourselves right now, putting them in one spot. Um, so, you know, we're excited to see these guys go compete and, and see how this thing shakes out. What intrigued you the most about Brees Hall when you started to think about adding him to that running Yeah, game? He's, uh, he's just the, the ultimate combination of speed and size. You know, I mean, he's up there close to 220 pounds. Uh, he ran in that high four threes. I watched Taylor Ambria, our running back coach's tape right away, and it just – it didn't stop. You just wondered when it was going to stop. And um, we felt like just with that, that sheer size, that was going to be a great complement to our group. But then, again, with that speed and that home, uh, home run ability, um, we're, we got pretty excited pretty quickly. Just looking if, if Joe didn't make any moves or anything like that, I, I didn't think he'd be sitting there at 35 or 38. So he kind of wasn't even in my thoughts initially. But if he was sitting there, uh, we, we were going to get pretty excited about it. Um, it's pretty cool right here, you know. It, again, when you watch college football, just these running backs don't really run outside zone the way that, you know, it's kind of taught within the teams that want to run outside zone in the NFL. There's just, it's not two tight end sets. You just don't get to see them, uh, you know, one foot cut and, and have the vision and go through, uh, you know, go through their reads and their feel. Well, you could see it in the open space, and that's what we look for. If the guy can cut at any point on his tape, we feel like he can be an outside zone guy. And you can see it right here out in the open space. The other part about this that's really cool is even if he's a good route runner, sometimes you don't get to see it because, again, they just don't ask him to run a ton of routes. Well, if he can get outside of his frame and cut like this, we feel like, man, he could be a pretty good route runner. But then you got to find out if he has natural hands and if he can actually catch the ball. You know he's got good size. You know he can cut. Now can he catch the ball? And you can see that on the tape all over the place. Again, he didn't run many routes, but for a running back to just catch that away from his body like he is right here, really actually have a feel as he's looking right here to see what he has to do after the ball and then obviously make guys miss in the space right there and go create you know, on, on plays that should be two, three-yard completions, make them into touchdowns. Um, I, we just thought it was a complete player that's really going to complement what we already have and what we're really excited about already in that room. When we met Jeremy, he, he unfortunately had the injury, uh, but he, um, you could just tell he's a man. He, he's a grown man that, that has his priorities straight, and you can tell he loves football. So even without turning on the tape, which I hadn't seen any tape of him up until the Senior Bowl, you knew that. You knew you were going to get a man that's going to love football. Let's hope the tape matches it. Not very often in, in today's game can you see tight ends that, that are, you know, can they get it done in the run game because, they're frankly, their hand's just not in the dirt. And when you turn on his tape, he didn't care about getting dirty. All right, he was going to be old school. He's a no-break mentality. He never stops his feet on this. This is a pretty good player over here on the right side, the number two draft pick in, in, in the draft in Aiden Hutchinson, and you don't see him stop right here on this cross set. We're going to ask him to do this quite a bit, and he doesn't stop his feet. He has, he's old school in that way, and it's not just one clip against Michigan because that's their rival. It was all over the tape. Here it is a little bit earlier in the year. Again, cross-sifting, we look for guys that are going to stop their feet and clinch a little bit. He doesn't. 
and he's going to continue delivering the blow, and it was over and over and over. Here he is, not cross-sifting, but here he is inserting right here, stuff we're going to ask him to do. And he's able to get on the defender quick, in great position, and finish a guy. And he doesn't just uh, – it's not finish when he, he gets the guy on the ground. He's going to – Make you know that he's coming all freaking day. You know, when you talk about a guy that's like a small school guy like Max, like what what stands out to you? What are the traits that you're looking for in terms of it, what's going to translate? Yeah, to you know, for, for every position, uh, but but definitely in the offensive line, I mean, um, you got to see a guy that's just that's gritty, you know, and you could see that with him. When we learned about Max, um, he's a kid that went to uh, Louisiana Lafayette. He's from Monroe, Louisiana, which there is a, a small um, – you know, 1A school there, and I asked him, I said, uh, I said, well, you're from Monroe, why would you go three hours south to Lafayette? And he's, you know, in his Cajun accent, he said, uh, they didn't recruit me, but we beat their butt four years in a row. You know, obviously going uh, early in day three, like what an accomplishment for a kid that only had one 1A offer. And, and to me, that's, that's a guy that still has a chip on his shoulder. And, you know, this is one thing that John Benton likes to do, uh, who's, who's done this a long time. These small school kids, he tries to find throughout their career what were the biggest games they played in? Who were the who were the biggest schools they played in, uh, played against? And, and one of them for for Max was was Texas, and it was probably maybe the best game he played. So he played against the best competition all year for him, and it was maybe the best game he played. And you can see it right here, him at uh, right tackle, all right, just pass setting, and he's setting right there. And then they're going to play a little TE game and the awesome redirect, the strain to finish and just keep on grinding it out. So you could just kind of see it, the, the traits being there. Uh, he'll, he'll be in great hands with John Benton, a guy, again, that's just coached for so many years that has been around guys from these small schools and trying to get them up to speed so they can uh, contribute as early as possible. Mike came in and, and had to learn the speed of the NFL game, no doubt, because it's just different, obviously, playing, uh, even though he played big-time football in the ACC. It was, uh, it was cool to watch him do that. It's cool to sit here in OTAs in the offseason and, and show him the clips and, and kind of have him explain how he's, uh, you know, in his own head uh, trying to get better. I think you can see it right here versus Cincinnati in a crucial point of the game in the fourth quarter. They're in a soft zone coverage right there. We check it down. He's got a lot of space. And just for this guy to be able to find his way, he's not the biggest, we know that. Uh, he's not the fastest, we know that. But he's got great will, he's got great contact balance, and he finds ways just to get all that hidden yardage uh, and just because he wants to. The coolest part was when he came back, he looked me with the biggest eyes, and he's like, I got caught from behind twice. And like it was like, all right, he's like, no, no, seriously, like uh, that's what's kept me up all night. Like I just need to get one yard faster. I think this is the one that bothers him probably the most. Uh, a, a point where we can put the game away versus Jacksonville. We're up two. We're in four-minute mode. The line blocks it perfectly, and there he is. He's this guy doesn't have an angle. He's, he's sucked up too far, and MC's got it, and he gets caught in, uh, around the ten-yard line. And I, I show this because that's the stuff that has driven him uh, to find a way to be one yard faster. And I truly believe we'll, we'll see it come September. But I truly believe uh, he got himself one yard faster this off season. Elijah. Just like I was saying with MC, I mean, this kid has incredible heart. Uh, he's not competing against anyone but himself. Like, he is so self-driven uh, to do that. Uh, so that's first and foremost. And, and that's, again, that's stuff that you don't coach. That's just innate. Uh, and that's just a credit to Joe and them for, for uh, seeing that a year ago and making him a priority to go get uh, early in that second round. If people are going to drop out too far, these checkdowns are going to end up being 15 yards. So no one in the league is going to do that. So this is a tough trait right here that looks kind of like a normal route that's not easy, being that fast, being able to shut it down, and then just the fearlessness going over the middle. He does not care that there's four bodies. He's going to catch it and still try to get as much as he can. He gets an extra four right there. So it's, it's pretty cool. What's also cool about it is he knows what he needs to clean up off this same, uh, same stem. He just ran what we call the locker where we run to 20 yards and break in, and he got an explosive off it. We should have a route off of – uh, that stem every time, across, break out, or uh, break to the pylon, break out, or go vertical, which we do have. We have it all, and he's working to master and make them all look the same. When you look at Zach, what was the biggest difference between Zach in week one versus Zach in week 17? Um, just his command in the huddle, his command at the line of scrimmage. Understanding that you don't have to look at that much in our system. It's, it's, I don't want to call it an easy system because nothing in the NFL is easy, uh, but you don't have to make it any more complicated than it is. On first down, we go to where Braxton's our number one, 
and Keelan's our number two, and you can just see how comfortable he is. He's going through his progression. He's taking a five-step drop. He's getting to the top. He's taking one hitch, and he is absolutely ripping this to Keelan. And if the defenders were a little bit further, he'd take another second hitch and get the ball right down to his, uh, his shallow cross right here. This shows all of us that he is getting so much more comfortable in this offense, being able to rip that on first down, not worried about those uh, underneath backers, knowing that his talent's going to take over. They're not in the right position. We got a go ball right here. This guy's off, so we're not doing it. Jamison's going to end up hooking up, and then we're going to have a through route and a crosser right here with a back finishing as our outlet. This is our number one. If one's open, we throw it, period. And he says no to it. And then he goes through his progression and then tries to come back to it, and he comes to it late. And if to the naked eye, you're like, how do you miss that throw? Well, he missed the throw because he tried coming back to something that he said no to. What was cool about it was this was play 13, and then play 29, we ran a similar play. We just motioned to it, and now Braxton's on it. And you can see right here, now he is going to just go through his progression. He learned from it on the sideline. Why did I get off this? Just get the ball to number one, make my life easier. So that's just been a huge emphasis for us, not just from week one to 17, but all off season. Uh, how can we make life simpler? And when life is not simple, when I call a bad play, which I'll call a lot of bad plays, when the protection breaks down, now Zach, you go do you. You do whatever's the best thing for the Jets offense uh, for that particular play.